Tugs can't bring your tanker in right now. Well, how do you like that? Hung up on me. How unfriendly. Oh, hello there. No, oh, I'm having a few problems here today. Come on, I have to go outside for just a minute. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, she's out there, all right. Big oil tanker. You know, the person in charge at the refinery keeps phoning me saying, bring her in, bring her in. But all the tugs are, they're all very busy today, so everybody's going to have to wait their turn. Between you and me, the person at the refinery isn't being very friendly at all. You know, Emily had a problem like this just the other day. Oh, there was a ship that wasn't being very friendly to her. Now, let me see if I can remember what she did. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One summer night, Emily and Theodore were floating home together, just talking about this and that. Did I ever tell you about the time I was in Africa? Said Emily. No, replied Theodore. Oh, please do, Emily. Theodore loved talking with Emily. It felt so nice to talk with his friend. Well, began Emily, I was sent to Africa to bring back a ship who had broken her engine and... Suddenly, a, a bright, shiny light streaked across the sky. What's that? said Emily. Shooting star, said Theodore. It's too big to be a star, gasped Emily. Look, said Theodore. The bright, shiny light suddenly seemed to fall right into the ocean not far from the big harbor. The tugs were silent for a long moment after that. Emily, said Theodore, finally, in a very quiet Strangest thing. The tugs were gathered at the great ocean dock. The dispatcher was just giving out the jobs for the day when a very surprising visitor appeared. The dispatcher was the first to see her. Tugboats, he announced. We have a guest this morning. Constance, whispered George in a small voice, most unlike his usual booming self. Now, all the tugs had seen Constance the Coast Guard ship before, but no one had ever actually talked to her. She always seemed very serious and very important. Good morning, Constance, said the dispatcher. And then he turned to the tugs with a look that said, be on your best behavior. Good morning, Constance, the tug said politely. Good morning, replied Constance briskly. And then she stopped before Emily. Emily, she said, I would like you to meet me at the harbor entrance later. I have a special job for you. Emily was surprised. She turned to the dispatcher to see if that was all right. That's fine, Emily, said the dispatcher. I will have another tugboat do your harbor job today. Uh, excuse me, Constance, said Emily, turning to Constance. Uh, wh what will we be doing? But Constance didn't answer Emily's question. She was already hitting him off. Well, that's the second strange thing that's happened lately, said Theodore quietly. First, that bright, shiny light last night, and now, this. The tugs couldn't stop talking about Constance. I wish Constance had told me what my special job is, said Emily. Constance is our Coast Guard, said Fodok in a serious voice. That means she's in charge of guarding our ocean. Maybe she's on a secret mission and needs you to help her. She probably needs you for something important. Still, said Theodore quietly, she left before she could answer Emily's question. She doesn't seem very friendly. The others said nothing, but inside they all agreed with Theodore. Constance didn't seem very friendly. Emily caught up with Constance near the entrance to the harbor. Constance set off without a word and... Emily followed behind, feeling more and more puzzled. Excuse me, Constance, called Emily, trying to catch up. Where are we going? No time to talk, Emily, called.
held Constance above the drum of her powerful Coast Guard engine. We have important work to do. Emily could see they were passing the last marker buoy in the harbor. So we're going out on the ocean, she said to herself. Emily forgot all about her questions. This will be like an adventure, she thought. Constance led Emily quite a ways along the coast, getting further and further from the harbor. Finally, Constance turned away from the shore and headed out towards the open ocean. Not too long after that, Constance slowed her engine and announced, It should be near here. Then she began searching the water. What should be near here? Are you looking for something? Said Emily. What is it? I mean, would you like me to help you find it? I'll tell you about it later, said Constance quickly. But right now, I'm very busy. Just float quietly. Suddenly, Emily saw something. It was floating in the water just ahead. Constance! Constance! She called. Constance headed over immediately. That is just a piece of driftwood, said Constance. It is not what I'm looking for. Well, maybe if you told me what to look for, Emily started to say. I already told you, interrupted Constance, to float quietly. Now I have a lot of work to do. Well, Emily was beginning to get very upset, and she could feel her engine getting hotter and hotter. I was only trying to help, she said quietly. But Constance was already searching again with that busy look of hers. Emily couldn't help agreeing with what Theodore had said. Constance really didn't seem very friendly. Not very friendly at all. Back in the harbor, Theodore and Hank were heading home from work. Theodore turned and gazed sadly toward the ocean. It's getting late, he said. We still haven't heard from Emily. She must be very busy with Constance, said Hank. Theodore was getting more and more concerned about Emily. But right now, it seemed there was nothing to be done but wait. Wait and worry about Emily. The sun was beginning to sail over the edge of the ocean, and Emily was still floating after Constance, who was still searching and searching. Hurry, said Constance. It'll be dark soon, and we must find it. Then Emily saw something floating in the water. Now, Emily didn't want to talk. She didn't want to upset Constance again. And maybe, thought Emily, this was just another piece of driftwood. But it didn't look like a piece of driftwood. It had brightly colored markings, and it was very big. Constance, called Emily. I see something. What is it, Emily? replied Constance. There's something floating in the water, replied Emily, staring towards the brightly marked thing. Constance headed over to the thing without a word. Then she called to Emily. You found it. Come and tie your tow line onto it. Emily floated over and saw that the brightly marked thing was really a rocket floating in the water. This rocket must have been the bright, shiny thing Theodore and I saw in the sky last night, Emily thought to herself. It tumbled down to Earth, all in flames. Where did it come from, Constance? asked Emily. Who does it belong to? I mean, where are we taking it? In all her excitement, Emily forgot about how upset she felt at Constance. All I have time to tell you, replied Constance, is that this rocket is very important. It's part of a spaceship, and I need you to help me get it back to the harbor as soon as we can. Emily had put the rocket on her deck and was following along behind Constance as fast as she could go. She's not friendly. She's not friendly. She's not friendly, Emily repeated to herself. They still had a long way to go, and the sun was almost down. Faster, Emily, called Constance. Now the rocket was heavy, and it was hard for Emily to carry. She wanted to slow down and catch her breath a little. Emily, was Constance, the rocket is slipping off your deck. I tried to tie it on properly, Emily started to say. But you were in a big hurry and... No time to talk now, said Constance. Just tie the rocket back on, quickly. Well, Emily was tired of chasing after Constance, and she was tired of carrying the heavy rocket. But most of all, she was tired of not being able to talk. Her face felt hot, and she wanted to shout out loud. Slowly, she turned to face Constance. Why are you stopping? demanded Constance. We are late. I am not doing another thing till you say please, replied Emily in a steady voice. Well, Constance didn't say anything. I tried to tell you I didn't have time to tie the rocket on properly, but you were in a big hurry, Emily continued. 
And now you're upset with me because we're late. Well, maybe the other tugboats are afraid to talk to you, but I'm not. You're not very friendly. Well, it seems you could hear the silence all the way back to the big harbor. Constance slowly turned to face Emily. Emily floated firmly in her place, but inside, everything seemed to be moving very fast. What would Constance say? Constance said was the most surprising thing. Do you really think I'm not friendly? Said Constance. She sounded a little hurt. Well, Emily didn't say anything. I always have a lot of important work to do, continued Constance, getting her busy sounding voice back a little. I don't have time to be friendly. Being friendly doesn't take any time at all, replied Emily. And being friendly is important to me. Emily felt like Constance was staring right through her, but still, she floated where she was. Emily the Vigorous, said Constance, her engine rumbling. You are a very hard-headed young tugboat, and you are the first tugboat to ever talk back to me like this. Again, Emily didn't say anything. She looked Constance straight in the eye. You remind me of myself when I was younger, concluded Constance. I like you. You do? Said Emily. She was so surprised she almost laughed out loud. I do, said Constance. And I'm glad you spoke up just now. I really don't mean to be unfriendly. Sometimes I... I am a bit bossy. Then she smiled and said, Now, will you please get going? Well, Emily had to smile too. Okay, Constance, she said. Just let me pull this rocket back up on my deck. The sun had almost set, and Theodore had almost given up waiting for Emily to come home. When suddenly he saw her returning to the harbor with Constance. Theodore rushed out to greet his friend. Emily! Emily! I missed you! Where have you been? What's that on your deck? Emily glanced at Constance. She knew Constance was in a hurry. I I'll tell you all about it tomorrow, she whispered to Suddenly, Theodore realized he was floating right in front of Constance, blocking her way. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Constance, said Theodore nervously. But Emily is my friend, and, and well, I missed her. Emily is my friend, too, replied Constance. And I think we might have a little time to talk about this rocket right now. Well, Constance began to tell the tugs about how the rocket came to land in the ocean outside the big harbor. And I'll tell you something really interesting. Somehow, as the tugs moved closer to listen to her story, Constance forgot all about being in a hurry or being important. All she could think of was how nice it felt to have new friends to talk to in the big harbor. Of course, Emily and Theodore felt the same way. You know, sometimes you just have to speak up when someone's upsetting you. Now, that's that unfriendly person from the oil refinery. I just know he's going to complain about his oil tanker not having arrived yet. Well, this time, I'm gonna speak up, just like Emily. You are being very rude, and I'm not gonna talk to you anymore until you say please. Oh, hi, Mom. Oh, what a surprise. This is gonna take a little while to explain, I'm afraid. Uh, thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Hi. No, Mom, I didn't mean that you were being rude.